Roaming is one of the most important aspects of any defending round. There is a reason as to why 4 out of 5 defenders are roaming above the site in Pro League. In this video, I'll be going over all of the principles of roaming, so no matter what rank you are, you'll improve from this video. And jumping into the first topic of the video, what actually is roaming? The act of roaming in Rainbow Six Siege is when any defender doesn't spend the majority of the round on site. The objective for the roamer is to delay the attacker's time, flank, and hold important parts of the map. The roamer should be the first thing the attackers have to deal with when attacking. And there isn't a set number of roamers for any given round, it all depends on the site and the map. But I would recommend 2-3 to three people off site. Having 2-3 to three people off site allows the defenders to hold more map control, which slows and alters the attacker's push. But on the other hand, having only one roamer is just as bad because the attackers will drone them and collapse on them and they'll have no support. That's why having 2-3 to three roamers is essential to winning rounds on defense. And now that I've gone over what roaming is, I want to talk about the different types of roamers. There are two general types of roamers, the first being a shallow roamer or a soft roamer. This type of roamer is someone who is not on site but very close to site so they can rotate back very quickly. As a shallow roamer you don't just want to be in any random room close to site, you want to choose rooms that are very crucial points to winning the round. Now I'm going to give you some examples. The first example is when defending bar slash gaming room on chalet. A good way to shallow roam is holding above from library. It allows you to stop the attackers from playing vertically and opening up the hatch and collapsing onto site. You can also hold library when defending master slash office on the same map to slow the attacker's push and stop them from gaining map control. Another example on a different map is holding onto sunrise or blue bar when defending kitchen on coastline. It allows you to stop the attackers from gaining map control and being right outside of site. Holding crucial points like this allows you to waste attackers time and stop the attackers from gaining map control while being relatively safe. And that brings me to my next tip for shallow roaming to bring shields. Bringing a shield on a shallow roam allows you to get free kills while being safe. You can set up your shield in crucial areas and pair it with a Wamai or a Jaeger and you'll be really hard to clear. Some things to avoid when shallow roaming is roaming in rooms with too many angles onto you like bar on cafe. When you roam in rooms like this it makes it very easy for the attackers to drone you out and pinch you. So roam in rooms without too many angles onto you and are relatively easy to make it back to sight from. And now that you know the core principles of shallow roaming let's talk about the other type of roamer, the deep roamer. This type of roamer is much farther off site, making it harder to get back to site but can waste much more time and if done correctly can allow for easy kills. This type of roaming is much more difficult and can be much more risky. As a deep roamer you want to slow down common initial pushes from the attackers. When you slow down the attackers from entering the building or taking early map control it makes it much harder to set up their attack. An example of this is when defending kitchen on cafe, holding the hatches and vertical play from cigar is a very good way to stop the attackers from executing their push. And playing above hatches is a very common way of deep roaming. It's much easier to hold a crucial point of the map when you can flank down hatches or just rotate back to site from a hatch. Another way to deep roam is going for a C4 kill as Valk or Pulse. Either scanning them with your heartbeat sensor or pinging them on your Valk cam to know where they are to throw the C4. A common misconception about deep roaming is hiding in corners hoping to be misdroned. In higher ranks there are rarely any misdronings and once they've droned you out in a corner you're going to likely be trapped and killed. So all Always try to have a purpose when roaming. And now that you know the core aspects of roaming, let's talk about which operators you should be using when roaming. Most ops that can be used for shallow roaming can also be used for deep roaming and vice versa. But some are stronger than others in specific situations. The best operators to run for shallow roaming are Ella, Thorn, Wamai, Alibi, Malusi, Aruni, Frost, Warden, and Azami. Now that's a decently long list, but keep in mind any operator could soft roam, but in my opinion those are the best. The operators I just named allow you to bring enough utility so you're not easily cleared like traps, shields, and anti-gadget abilities, so that's why I think they're the best operators for shallow roaming. Now the best ops for deep roaming are Valk, Cav, Pulse, Vigil, Lesion, Oryx and Solus. Once again, in theory, you could run any operator in Deep Roam, but in my opinion, the operators I named are the best at wasting the attacker's time and utility. And now that you know what roaming is, what type of roamers there are, and what operators to run when roaming, let's go over the best tips for any roamer. The number one biggest tip for roaming is to waste time. Probably the most important aspect of a roamer's game is wasting time. As a roamer, the attacker should have to deal with you and use utility like drones, 
flashes, grenades, anti-roam abilities, and things like that if you're doing your job correctly. The reason why wasting time is so important is because when you waste the attacker's time, it makes it much harder for the attacker to set up a push. Most of the time, if you waste enough of the attacker's time, they end up having to full rush sight at the end of the round, making it easier for your team to win. Another really good tip for roaming is playing your life. If you get an early kill, don't leave immediately. Still try to waste more time because when you take out an attacker, their utility isn't going to be fully used used but yours can be. A good rule is if you get a kill or two as a deep roamer, revert yourself into a shallow roamer to try to waste more time and utility. And the next tip for roaming is to trade your life. What I mean by that is if you're with a teammate that is also roaming, put yourself in positions where if one of you goes down then the other picks up the kill. It's very easy to do but not done nearly enough. Another good tip is stop holding angles so much. Let's hop in game so I can show you a better way to go about it. Most people when roaming hold these super predictable angles and get pre-fired or quick peeked a lot. A really quick and easy way to have better positioning and win more gunfights is to hold off angles or play off sound and then swing. Instead of holding the angle like this, hold it like this. Because when the enemy swings around this corner, they're most likely going to have their crosshair right there because that's the most common spot. So when they come around this corner, they have to flick their crosshair all the way over there just to try to kill you. And all you have to do is just track him like that and that's going to be a super free kill. It makes it way easier to win the gunfight when you're on an off angle and you're not going to be pre-fired or quick peeked or something like that. And another solution to holding bad angles is to just play off sound. Instead of holding this common angle, all you have to do is just don't peek. Maybe you could hold a different angle or something like that, but make sure you're not peeking. And then all you got to do is when you hear somebody, then you swing out. It's going to stop you from getting pre-fired and give you peekers advantage, which is going to lead to a lot more easy kills. The next tip is to get rid of as much information gatherers as possible. This means shooting drones in prep phase, shooting zero cams, Ayana clones, Brava drones, Twitch drones, anything that can gather information on you because once the attackers have that information, it makes it much easier to pinch and kill you. But now that I've gone over tips for roamers, let's go over some mistakes a lot of inexperienced players make. Number one, being trapping yourself. You want to have multiple ways to escape a situation and you don't want to put yourself in a random room with one exit so the other team can trap you. Number two is getting skipped over. And what I mean by that is if you're defending kitchen on cafe, holding the hatches and vertical play in cigar is a pretty good play. But if there's one minute left in the round and the attackers are on site and they have done nothing to clear you, you got skipped over. So if your first idea was to hold the hatches and vertical play, then you got to realize when the other team isn't going for them and adjust your room. And to finish off the video, I want to give a few little tips before we finish. Number one being don't be afraid to bring utility and reinforcements off site to help you roam better. Using your resources when droning is very important to actually winning and actually improving when you roam. Also, roaming is so much better in a team, so don't roam every round solo queue and expect it to work out every single time. But if you do have a teammate or two, try to get them to help you out on your roam or at least give call outs to help you out on your roam. If you feel that you improved from this video and you also enjoyed the video, click the video popping up on your screen to watch more of my content.